Well, I just got on Mojave Road here and it's an off-road trail and it can be pretty treacherous. And a good thing to do when you're about to hit an off-road trail is to air down your tires. So drop the PSI down so it gets more traction. What that does, that basically spreads out the footprint of the tire so that it uh, floats over obstacles and sand a little bit easier with uh, less chance of digging in and sinking. So I have an air down kit right here. And I'm gonna use this to drop my PSI from 32, which is what it currently is, down to about 15. So I'm only a few miles into the Mojave Road and it's already just absolutely gorgeous. This is why I love the desert. There's so many unexpected things. Like, it's pretty green out here. It's May out in the desert and it's green. And off to my left here, there's a bunch of lava rock and cinder cones, which you just don't think of seeing in the desert. And the scenery is just stunning and I'm barely on the road. Uh, I can't wait till I get to my destination see how it looks from there, but it's gonna be plenty of photo ops out on this trip, uh, that's for sure. So I just stumbled on kind of a forest of Joshua trees. So I thought I'd break out my digital camera, get a few quick shots. Not gonna be any masterpieces, the light's still really ugly. But um, just to document it, because this is cool. Wasn't really expecting this. I don't often bring my DSLR with me on trips like this because I get a little burned out shooting digital in my professional work. But I'm glad I brought it on this trip because I think shooting these snapshots in between using my film camera, it's a great way to keep the creative juices flowing and keep myself immersed in the landscape so that when it comes time to expose some celluloid, I'm ready to go. got to my campsite and uh, it's pretty. It's at the base of a mountain, which is really cool. It's nice and sheltered. It's a good place to camp, but photographically, this, this ain't the spot. Uh, the view is not that great. There's power lines in the distance uh, and there's just not that many open views that I was hoping for. So I'm not sure I wanna camp here tonight. But truth be told, my favorite spot so far was actually just a couple miles into the trail right at the base of those cinder cones. Um, that was actually a campsite and that was pretty freaking awesome. So I think I want to go back there. I would love to be taking pictures there tonight and tomorrow morning. Maybe I can get back there in 45 minutes. It took me a lot longer than that to get here, but I won't stop to take any pictures, I swear. All right, we better hightail it out of here. Made it in 47 minutes flat. All right. So this is the campsite. And it's got a way better view than the last one. 360 degree views, but most of all, excellent view of those cinder cones. But I mean, look at this. Who doesn't want to wake up to that in the morning? <sighs> well, I got camp set up, got my tent, got my bed, Got my wood, got my jerky, and uh, I'm starving. I really wanna make dinner right now, but I'm, I'm gonna hold off because the light's getting really good. These cinder cones behind me are starting to look amazing. So I think it's time, uh, time to break out the panoramic. Uh, so the composition I'm working on right now is uh, of one of these cinder cones, and I'm putting it smack dab in the center which whenever I put something in the center, I feel a little like a one trick pony because I do that a lot. But I love it. I love symmetry. I love putting stuff down the center. I love things ordered and neat. Plus these cinder cones are kind of symmetrical just all on their own and I want to highlight that. So putting it right down the center should do that. And I'm thinking a 300 millimeter lens is going to work and I'm going to go for a lighter look, um, lighter colors, softer color palette, that kind of thing. So I'm going to use Kodak Portra instead of something more saturated like Velvia. I've been doing a lot of desert scenes in Kodak Portrait lately, and I'm actually kind of liking it. So that's what I'm gonna do on this. And also, wide angle is so overdone, uh, by myself included, I've done so much wide angle, that I'm sticking to longer focal lengths these days to try and mix it up. 
But the bottom line is I just want to do something different. And although this may seem strange to some doing the soft color palette and putting stuff right down the center, it certainly is different. All right, Portra is loaded up. F45 at one half. That's my calculated exposure. For those of you who wonder how I meter, I'm using a spot meter. I basically metered the dark part of the cinder cone at about one to one and a third stop under middle tone to render it darker. So we've moved on to a different composition, something quite a bit more colorful uh, and kind of epic. So I'm doing Fuji Velvia, but the light is fading super quick as it always does. And there's some clouds out on the horizon that are messing things up. So yeah, that color's pra practically gone. This may not even be worth it. I'll meter it up and see. Problem with a slow camera and fast moving light. Boy, you gotta love Fuji Velvia film. When I took this picture, I thought I was well past the point of good color. But Velvia has this ability to pick up the subtle pinks and purples and blues that you get right after sunset that most films just wouldn't be able to record. I mean, the human eye can barely pick up these colors at that time of day. But I'm glad I used Velvia because this ended up being one of my favorite pictures from the trip. Well, I'd say that was a productive day. So now I'm just sitting by the fire enjoying my tea uh, while the night sets in. I may take a few shots of the night sky before I go to bed, but for the most part, uh, I'm gonna wake up early tomorrow morning, hopefully get a good sunrise, and then uh, be on my way. But see you guys tomorrow morning. Oh, oh it's too damn early. Sunrise is coming any minute here. So I gotta get in position. I don't really know how much color we're gonna get. It's kind of cloudy on the horizon, so that may block the sun. Oh man, I slept terribly last night. All right, finally settled on a composition I like, and I'm using my 90 millimeter lens, so I'm going pretty wide, uh, but not super wide. And the sun should be poking through before too long. The clouds don't stop it anyway. This is my center ND filter. Should take care of the vignetting caused by this lens. And then I have a specially modified Lee holder that slips over the top of that because the ring is too big for a regular Lee holder. There's a lot of clouds out on the eastern horizon, so the sun isn't poking through as much as I hoped. Really not getting a whole lot of color. Which is a bummer. That's the way it goes. I'll probably break out some black and white film in a little bit here because the light's just not anything that colorful.
Thanks to my black and white film and a little bit of tilt shift blur, I was able to create kind of a stylized take on this landscape. I think if I had shot this as a straight color photograph, it would have been pretty boring because of that overcast sky. So my friend got me this flashlight. It puts out a thousand lumens, which is just obscenely bright. I mean, this thing has got to be considered a weapon. You could legitimately blind someone with this. So I started messing around with it last night, uh, doing some digital photos at night. And uh, this thing is so bright, it illuminates the air. So I was using it to uh, like paint a, a beam of light above me and doing a torch, holding it above me and painting the landscape, just doing a bunch of goofy stuff. But it's a lot of fun doing that light painting. I don't do too much of that because I, I tend to be more on the film side of things. But uh, just breaking out a digital camera, big powerful flashlight and using that to just paint the landscape, do some other light painting stuff. That's a blasty blast, man. Get out and do that every once in a while, because that's fun. Well, that about wraps it up for this trip. The light wasn't as epic as I hoped it would be, but that's all right. I think I got a few good shots anyway. Most of all, it was just a great trip. You got to get out to Mojave National Preserve and drive the Mojave Road. I mean, the solitude can't be beat. The scenery's gorgeous and you just get that classic Southern California desert. It's just awesome. So, I'm Nick Carver. Thanks for coming along with me on this trip. And now, it's on to the next one.